They are the top elected officials in their respective counties. Mayor Kirk Caldwell represents Honolulu, the state's most populous county. Harry Kim represents Hawaii Island, larger than the other islands combined. Mike Victorino represents Maui County, comprised of four islands. And Derek Kawakami represents the two islands that make up Kauai County. What are the biggest issues facing each mayor? Tonight's live broadcast and live stream of insights on PBS Hawaii. Start now. Aloha and welcome to Insights on PBS Hawaii. I'm Daryl Huff. Tonight, we have a rare opportunity with all four mayors in one place at the same time ready to answer questions live about issues and challenges they face on their islands. They share long backgrounds in public service. Two are in their first year as mayor and two are veterans of years in administration. We look forward to your participation in tonight's show. You can email, call, or tweet your questions. And you'll find a live stream of this program at pbsy.org and the PBSY Facebook page. Now to our guests. Harry Kim is in his third term as mayor of Hawaii County. He was a medic during the Vietnam War and later was a teacher and coached football and basketball. Then he became the face and voice of public safety on the Big Island as civil defense administrator. He also operated the Kao Kimchi with his mother for 25 years. <laughs> Michael Victorino was born on the Big Island and is in his first year as mayor of Maui County, which includes Maui, Molokai, Lanai, and Koholawe. Before that, he served on the Maui County Council and was also involved in sports as a Little League baseball coach. His son is retired major leaguer Shane Victorino. Derek Kawakami is the mayor of Ka the county of Kauai, which includes Kauai and Niihau. This is also his first year as mayor, having served on the Kauai County Council and in the Hawaii State Legislature before that. He is a third generation Kauai resident. And Kirk Caldwell is the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu. He was born in Waipahu and raised on the Big Island where his father was a country and plantation doctor. He served in the state house and is in his second term. His mayor term limits prevent him from running again for mayor next year and I promise we'll ask him what he's gonna run for. <laughs> but first of all, let's start with an issue that all of you, you folks are contending with and is proving to be one of the most difficult issues, homelessness. Particularly now after all of you have tried to house as many people as you could and you've still got an almost equal number of homeless out there, but these are chronic, very difficult people. Uh, Mary Kim, let me start with you. Uh, do you support an Ohana Zone concept for those kinds of folks, right? And I'd like to ask all of you, how do you feel about that? Is that going to work out for your island, and do you think that'll work for other places? Well, I'm not too familiar with uh, most places. Uh, I know it'll work on our island uh, because of our land size, people that live there, and who the homeless are. I think we should make a distinction between the homeless that need help, seeking help, and the squatters, uh, just to give a title to them, the squatters who care not to be helped, squatters who like that lifestyle, and that's a bigger problem for us. Uh, Mayor uh, Caldwell Horlulu, you have a little different tack when that comes to these free zones, um, but the legislature seems to be wanting to force them on you. Well, I, I think, you know, people want to just see the homeless gone. Um, and the fact, if you put them into a Hana zone, doesn't mean you don't count them as homeless. They're still, still considered unsheltered. And what we're focusing to do is actually reduce the number of homeless on our streets and parks and other places. And so we've adopted this housing first model. It's the model adopted across the country. And the good news is while there are still many homeless, our point in time count has shown in the past couple of years a reduction. And you look at most major cities on the West Coast, and we just hosted the Conference of Mayors and some of the mayors attended the presentation, the mayor of LA talked, the mayor from an Oregon city and a, and a Washington city talked, all of them spending much more money than we did and all of them seeing dramatic increases in homelessness. So I think actually all four of our counties are doing much more than you see up on the continent in terms of homeless, but it is a huge challenge. There's no easy fix here, Daryl. People want to disappear overnight, this grew over time, but there are many victories. Kahuiki Village just down the street from where we're sitting is one of those. The final phases are being done. You have 650 families with children there. So you're That's saying, just so one example. So yes, yeah, so almost a steady state, given the, the, the nature of things, is, is a success. Mayor Cal Kami from Kauai, what's the status of the homeless problem on your island? Well, it's it's um, good that Mayor Caldwell mentioned Kauiki Village because just yesterday uh, we toured it with Dwayne Carisu. Uh, we partnered up with the state, and I got to thank the state. They uh, EO'd some property over. Uh, to the county and we're going to take that model 
and deploy it right on Kauai. And when you take a look at how we're going to address homelessness, uh, we've really took a targeted approach. We're going to focus on young mothers with children, young families, um, those folks that want to be helped. And uh, when you take a look at the location, which is key, it needs to be located near transportation, near jobs and services. So that particular parcel is uh, right across of Kukui Grove. So we have an abundance of jobs. We have a county-sponsored transit-oriented development workforce housing project right across the street. And we have our KEO homeless shelter uh, right across the street as well. So it's a prime location. Um, it's near existing infrastructure. Let me ask though, what's the nature of your guys' issue? Is you mentioned having families with children. You have a lot of families with children that are still out there. Absolutely. Oh, okay, so that might be different from in your island where I think that if we were talking about the chronics are kind of. Well, we have we have, have those we have our chronics too. But when you take a look at addressing what we can address, um, dealing with a population that doesn't want help, um, that doesn't want to live by rules that we set. Uh, we got to turn our efforts towards those folks that are struggling, that are working, that are just barely getting by, and because of that, uh, we're fo focusing our efforts on that target market. Mayor Victorino, how's, how's Well, they've covered pretty much everything that we are doing. Kahali Akeola is really one of our center points that we have had many, many successes. It's a homeless resource center, so we bring people in and we try to develop programs so that they become productive citizens. And I agree with you, Derek, and, 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 and the other mayors. Those who want help, we're, we're, we're willing. We're working very hard putting up units for them. It's the chronic, those that have mental health and substance abuse. And the real challenge is government, every time there's a shortfall, they cut substance abuse and mental health services. I was hearing that something that there's very few programs available in Maui. Yeah, very few. In fact, when we have our young people, if they have challenges, they have to be flown to Honolulu because we closed up our youth wing in Maui Memorial. So I'm working at, at, with the new health care system, the Maui health care system, to see if, how quickly we can open that up again because to me, it's the worst thing when a kid is in that kind of dire need to be separated from the family. Um, on another subject that, uh, related, affordable housing, uh, earlier we were talking to Mayor Kawakami, you're seeing that actually as, as the, the biggest issue for your, your county looking ahead. Well, it depends who you talk to, um, but affordable housing is definitely on the top of our mind. I mean, I tell you, we're going to need about 9,000 units, and so the approach that COI has taken is we're taking a look at our, in, our existing uh, inventory of land. So county and state owned properties where we don't have to wait for big landowners to come to the table. Um, we're talking about property that are underutilized near existing infrastructure. You know, we have a civic center with a big parking lot. And just yesterday we we're uh, touring Honolulu and I had my guy Keith Perry with me and we we're driving by Ala Moana. And he said, you know, we're focusing on one parcel, but take a look at our civic center. We have a big parking lot. You know, in Lihue, in our urban core, we can always build up so we can build above that parking lot and go four stories of affordable rentals. And I bet you a lot of our workers that are working in that civic center would love to live, work, and play um, right in that urban core. And, it, and that's how you address traffic as well. Uh, Mayor Kim, uh, on your island, uh, you just had a huge lava flow take out a lot of people's houses. Where, where are you now in housing those those folks and is that overall contributing to your affordable housing problem there too? Uh, not as the same as the neighbor islands because we have one advantage and that is of space. In regards to the 750 or so uh, homes, not counting farms and different things that were lost. Uh, a lot of them have been taken care of by their own resources because of, uh, thank God for insurance, because fire insurance covered all of the damages if you were covered for it. But we do have a percentage and we have a real solid core of people working on a long-term plan for housing and different things. And without the FEMA assistance and the state assistance, we'd be dead in the water. And they're doing a good job on it and hopefully we'll come up with some real, real good long-term programs for them. Mayor Caldwell, um, they, they all mentioned, oh, we've got a lot of space. You have a little bit more of a space problem, but you also, just like all the islands, getting new land approved for housing is a terribly long process. It is. I, I want to mention a couple of things. Last week, the headline in the paper was average price of a home on Oahu, 830000 a record. Um, and in the past two years, the population of Oahu has shrunk by 6,000 people. 
people are moving in and people are moving out. And the people are moving out, I think, if people are born and raised here, can't afford to live here, we're losing a little bit of aloha every time they go. Part of our heart, part of our soul leaves. And then people come in who can afford to live here. So what we're really trying to do is, is incentivize housing in the urban core, try to make, keep the country country, make the city more city. And so as mayor, we have now accessory dwelling units. We've permitted 600 of these, approved them. Not enough, but we're making progress. And those, we, those actually require people to live in them. Those are not right, vacation rentals. Right, and to be rentals. rented. Right. Yeah, and, then, and they long term. Um, and already on a home. And there's about 120,000 lots in Oahu who could do an ADU. Doesn't mean they all will. Um, then we've passed two bills that mandate more affordable housing in the urban core, but also give you incentives. You don't have to do park dedication. You don't have to pay real property tax. You don't have to pay the fees, sewer hookup, all of these things. And it's making a difference, but not quick enough. And then more recently, you know, Marshall Hung, who does great affordable housing, workforce housing, uh, came forward with a proposal working with different people in our community to identify as if in the urban core, if you have a lot less than 20,000 square feet, will allow you to build up to six floors, no elevator, second stairwell, narrow, right. a lot of things to reduce the cost per square foot to $225 per square foot, and there's interest. So we're doing these things, but there's huge demand for more affordable rentals and also to purchase and I'm hoping that this all comes together. It won't happen overnight, right. but we'll turn that corner and start to see the prices coming down. Also, vacation rentals. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I, I, I want to start um, dealing with some of these questions because they're already starting to come in. And this, we talked a little bit about homeless. And uh, Mayor, you win the prize for the first. Remember, you're the first <laughs> first question directly at a mayor on something we've uh, we're talking about. Maui resident thinks that most of the homeless on Maui are from the mainland. Who is sending them here? And are other states sending homeless to Maui? You know, there has been much talk about that, and I've got to be honest, sometimes I'm out there and I go walking in these homeless areas, and I found a lot of people that were sent here by somebody else, family, sometimes municipalities, and I want, I, I'm not one that like to criticize and, and complain. The challenge there is some of them don't know how to get back, and I was thankful at one time the hotel industry had the... Uh, ability to send back these homeless people that wanted to go back. But a lot of them are non-resident. They're single men, a lot of single men, and they don't want help, like you mentioned, squatters, or their, their mental capacity and their substance abuse has taken their lives off. So for us, it's finding a space for them to take them somewhere where they can have the services, and as well as at, at this point, seeing who and what wants to go back and how we can help them go back to where they came from. Let me, uh, now, we, I, bet, I promise we talk about vacation rentals. Yes. It's, right now it's a huge <laughs> issue on Oahu. I know all of you have had to contend, contend with this. Uh, have you all got your regulatory schemes down now? And um, Mayor Kim, what has been the, how, how would you rate the, the success of, of your folks in controlling this, this issue? Because it must be just blowing up in the Big Island too. Yeah, we're the last of the counties to have something in it in regulation. Yeah. This is something uh, I think all of your counties helped us out because we called each one to learn from. And there's one advantage to being last uh, in regards to the problem and uh, because we learn from other counties and I really am grateful for that. So what do you think are the key components? Uh, for the long term? Uh, the short -term controlling rentals? the short term rentals, yeah. We have to understand this first basis of short term rentals. These are small businesses doing business of rentals in an area that should not be. These are areas primarily that are residential areas and there's strict rules on what uh, details a residential place. And these are people and you know, it's not popular to say, but I've said it, uh, a lot of it just to make money. And we face that and a lot of them are making good money. We have to regulate it, and that's all it was all about, regulating the short-term rentals. And we have done that, and hopefully now our job is to make sure we identify who they are and enforce it. For all of you, how do you balance this pressure, though, from uh, that industry in particular, but in general, the tourism industry? I know a lot of the tourist industry are hotel-based, and they want the people in the hotels, but also there's other people in the tourism industry that have a job servicing of vacation rentals or whatever. There's a lot of pressure from that industry to let some level of the industry <coughs> thrive. 
I mean, how do you balance that need for to bring in tourists versus, you know, control this residential businesses? When I was on the council, the Maui County Council moved in two areas, B&B, short-term rentals, TVRs, we called it. And we tried to go by districts and limit the number in each district of both. The B&Bs had to be owner-operated. They had to live there. And we had 400 throughout the county of Maui, or actually the island of Maui, because we left Lanai and Molokai alone to there, and we let them set their own press, uh, numbers up. Only 400 and for the 400 for the entire island of Maui. And the same thing happened with the uh, TVRs, okay? And so the process is long and encumbersome. That's, that's one of the problems, you know? We have the process, To okay? get a permit, you mean? To get the permit to be legal, right? And then we put in a number of rules and conditions that if your neighbors, they objected. And, and, and so there's been a lot of challenges in this area. And what has happened is certain areas like Paia, for example, I think was limited with uh, to 48 or something. Now the community has voted they want to reduce it to 33. So now they're going backwards because they feel too many vacation rentals in Paia. So how many do you have to get rid of? Well, a, and, and, and Mayor Kawakami and Mayor Kolo. For me, I, I, I believe somewhere uh, with the, uh, the study that I've just received from our planning department, probably around 1,000 to 1,500. That, that are operating illegally? Illegally, illegally. illegally yeah, what somewhere about, around there. Well, you know, first, the statistic is one in seven homes is, is a vacation rental on Koi, and that's both the legal and illegal. The biggest challenge we're faced with right now is uh, you have third-party internet-based platforms um, that are advertising illegal rentals and they are making it very hard because they do not publish the physical address. And uh, we see uh, activity where they're gaming the system. So they will advertise at 4.31 p.m. when they think our enforcement arm is going back home. Uh, we have people working around the clock. And so it makes it very hard, our enforcement Officers have to take a look at the description, take a look at pictures, and try to, I guess, be a detective to go find these units out. And uh, we've been trying to work with these third-party platforms. We went out during the legislative session to say, hey, we'll give you a list of every legitimate vacation rental on our island. You can cross-reference to make sure that they're legitimate. If that's too hard for you, you give us the list, and we will identify which ones are legal and not legal, and we'll, and we'll hand you the list. And they have... Um, they have not come to the table. We've had one company uh, recently meet with us to say, hey, that sounds reasonable. We'll go back and see if we can make this happen. So there is some sign of promise. So I wanted to add this. Um, you asked about the pressure points, traditional hotels, you know, vacation rentals, and, and then us folks living in our communities. And, you know, when, it, when is enough enough in terms of visitors? We have almost 10 million coming to the state of Hawaii, almost 6 million to Oahu alone, population of a million people. And people are saying, we don't want to be surrounded on all sides by visitors. You know, we want to go home to our Manoa homes where I live or Kailua and not feel like we have visitors in our neighborhood. And so there's this pushback. I think we're seeing it more and more. We see it all over. Derek mm -hmm. sees it on the North Shore. We see it. You see it on Kauai. You see it on Hilo and Kona. And we see it all over this island. And so I think all of us are trying to find this balance. We want visitors to come and have the experience of living in other parts of our island, not just in Waikiki, but we also have to be respectful of those who live in our neighborhoods and housing, because these homes that used to be rented to a local family for at least a year at a time are being rented every five days for a lot more. So we're trying to put more product out there and product is coming off that was there because it's so lucrative. And there has to be this balance. You and know, if I'm it doesn't happen, Daryl, there's gonna be more pushback from the people of the state against visitors and that's not a healthy thing for our economy. That's a good point, you know, but I mean, it doesn't sound like there's any tolerance at this table for the people who have been doing this for years who make the argument, oh, this is my livelihood, um, I'm employing other people to take care of this, I'm, I'm hosting visitors who are good for the economy. It sounds like what I'm hearing is tough. You're operating illegally. I mean, is that generally, well, uh, am I not being fair about that? Yeah, actually, I think we have the oldest policy on the books. I mean, we had a policy in place and uh, the way that we structured it is, is completely opposite that. We said that if you had shown proof that you were paying your general excise tax and your TAT, um, we would grant you the ability to apply for a non-conforming use certificate. So basically grandfathering in all of these folks that had, um, because the law was ambiguous, 
that had been operating a business over the course of the years, as long as they showed that they were paying the tax, we granted them the ability to to. Was that uh, just apply. for local owners? No, that's for any owner that was out there operating. And I forget what date was the trigger date, um, but we allowed those folks to apply for that non-conforming use. And did you find that there were a lot of people that had been paying their taxes? Because oh, yeah. a lot of people claim to be paying ta taxes, but yeah, they, there were quite a few that were paying the tax. So, um, unbeknownst to them. Uh, they were operating uh, illegally, or perhaps they knew they were operating illegally, but um, nonetheless, we had to take a route where we felt uh, it would mitigate any type of potential lawsuits and okay. still be able to manage the issue at hand. So um, I'm trying to move through issues pretty quickly because it's starting to accumulate here, but uh, <laughs> now let's, let's talk about the 40-meter gorilla in the room, the TMT. 30 meter gorilla in a room. You just added 10. <laughs> it just got bigger. Yeah, we're at um, And this is an interesting way of asking this question. It says, what do all four mayors think of the TMT issue on Mauna Kea? Can Mayor Kim answer last? Yeah, so what advice would you guys have for Mayor Kim about what he should be doing with TMT? It's been so, thrown Thank in you his for the listener. Too. That's very clever. Uh, thank you. Ready. I was going to yeah. do it anyway, but I'm glad he asked. So, I mean, what do you guys think of what he's facing there? And what advice would you have? You know, I think um, the issue about TMT is, is much bigger than TMT. I think it's, it's a, a long time of broken trust, uh, broken promises. When I talk to uh, people of my age and my generation, um, they took a look at promises with Department of Hawaiian Homelands, um, granting Hawaiian people uh, the ability to build a home, and they're seeing their grandparents die on waiting lists. They're starting to see their parents start to die without ever having that promise fulfilled. And now here they are, and uh, I think it's our job to rebuild that trust. And I think in the big scope of things, it's a, it's a flawed process. I mean, and it comes down to respect. There's a number of management issues on Mauna Kea that needs to be addressed. You have a number of telescopes that are not operating and they should have been decommissioned and removed. It's like when we tell somebody, and we were taught to leave places better than what we found it in, pick up your Apala. You know, in a sense, to the people of Hawaii, it's leaving your rubbish behind without really taking care. So I think it's a much bigger issue. But do you, do you, would you, do you support the telescope being? I've there? always been pro-science and pro-technology. We push STEM in all of our classrooms nowadays. Uh, the question was asked to me uh, whether I'm pro TMT. I am very much in support of the telescope, but like I said, because of all these underlying issues, it's much bigger than whether you support it or not. It's about addressing the process, listening to people. There's a number of people who have been felt like they've been left out, and uh, these are things that we need to address as government to rebuild trust. I think that foundation of trust has been broken. Gentlemen, any, any advice about how to get past that. I want to just, so when I think, I thought everything Derek said I agree with. Yes. I would well, emphasize a couple other things. You know, all four of us have a connection to the Big Island. I was, I'm the only guy what, not born in Hilo. They were. And all of us grew up there and you wake up in the morning when you particularly have Kona winds and you see Mauna Kea. It touches all of us. You don't, you don't have to be Hawaiian to feel the power of that mana. And it's a powerful thing. So I think we feel connected to that. But as Derek said, it's, um, you know, I, I'm wearing a shirt. It's the creation chant, the Kumalipo. It talks about, you know, the creation, the beginning of it is about basically the Big Bang, the creation of the universe. And whether you come from a native Hawaiian perspective or from Western science, I think we come from the same place, and we are literally climbing the same mountain, maybe from different sides, but we want to get to the top. And so how do you, how do we climb together? Derek, I thought, had a good point, and my advice would be, yes, telescopes that should have been decommissioned and come down should have. Mayor Kim, I've heard him talk about allowing the Native Hawaiian community to have more management over this mountain, and they should. Um, how do you address some of those other wrongs that have happened long ago? The solution is not directly TMT. It's coming at it from a bigger perspective, and TNT is part of it. I support the project. I think it's easy to pile on. There's a lot of piling on going on. Um, and I think that doesn't help any of us. We, we, we work together. And as a community, we work together. Let me, Mayor Victorino, what are your thoughts about well, it? Well, they've covered the, the subject matter pretty thoroughly. And, and, and 
advice to coach, I would not give him any advice. I mean, <laughs> he's my coach and he taught me, so I cannot teach him. But really, what you're looking at, and I've, I'll culminate with everything that's been said, a pented up distrust to government in general. And it's not only the Hawaiians, it's others, but they have stepped up and they've said enough. And I, I, and I just had a, uh, 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 with 21 practitioners from Maui County, ranging from the ages of 30 to 80. And all of them have come together and I've listened to what they've talked about. They talk about the Aina, they talk about the Vai, they talk about the Kanaka. What they really want saying is, we want to be at least at the table to have a say. And I think that's come out very clear. To have a say in what goes on and how it's put together. We need to be there because we are the people of Hawaii. Okay, Mayor Kim, your turn. <laughs> where, where, where are we with this thing? And what, what do you think is going to happen? What, what's, what's the story? I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll tell you what I hope is going to happen. But, you know, it's funny. As soon as you mentioned this subject, I've, I felt myself go in a different zone. It's I more feeling. And it's because of uh, what it's doing to the island. Before I comment on the comments here, and the one thing of greatest sadness is what is happening and should not happen. Uh, because people have different views on it, there shouldn't be any hostility, mm -hmm. intimidation, hatred uh, uh, relating to your possession, regardless of what your possession is. And to me, that is the greatest sadness of what is happening today, a polarization of people based on your position on the telescope. In regards to the comments made, uh, we can spend two hours on it to cover the issues, but I'm just going to cover one. That's one of the most common things, just scopes that are not uh, being utilized now, decommissioned, get rid of them. Uh, the amount of improvement our government has made in the past, first of all, every scope that's up there now was built uh, before the year 2000. Mm -hmm. Since then, uh, tremendous improvements in regards to regulation because no one will deny that we did a lot of wrongs, and there's a lot of things we need to correct if we are to go forward. And in regards to that, uh, I'm gonna come on very shortly on a plan on how to go forward. I'm just hoping that people will back off a little bit from their hurt and their pain of the past and see how we can go forward and make this a good thing for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Because on my position, I really believe you know, uh, this is a good thing, but it depends on how we go forward. You know, uh, one of the things that all of you folks were involved with, uh, not so much Kauai, but Oahu sent a number of officers, Maui sent a number of officers to support, but the situation got so out of control that um, now we've heard the police chief in Honolulu say she'd be very reluctant to send officers again. Um, and uh, the, do, you, do, you assist, do you think it was a mistake to have allowed the the demonstration to occupy the road, and actually today is one month since that occupation began. Well, first of all, I want to thank two counties uh, in regards to the number of men they sent over, 30 and 60, I think, in your own numbers. 58. And I will say this so people understand the complexity of this and why I find myself keep going in a different uh, mood zone, mental zone. I was the person that received the call from the chief of police uh, where we are, what was happening. I don't think anyone uh, that in the planning of response to what was going to happen anticipated this kind of numbers. Uh, I think everybody knows this was very well planned and very well organized and it was a good thing. The protests were. And uh, I'll say this, you know, and I think everybody will agree. The, the protesters or the protectors, you know, uh, I think they prefer the name protectors in regards to that. Uh, they have stuck to their word in regards to no violence. They have stuck to their word in regards to controlling that. Uh, the they have the people of the Royal Order of Kamehameha, you know, helping out, uh, making sure that young people, you know, stay in line in regards to behavior, and they've done a great job in the way they do it, so know that. In regards to the question itself, the police was faced with a very, very difficult task decision. They knew they could not, they prepared, they really prepared in regards to making sure, because they knew it was going to be seniors. 
in how you handle them. Make sure of gentleness, of care, uh, pre-warning of what's going to happen. If you, I know television likes to see show drama, but if you all know, nobody was struggling. Not one person arrested was struggling. You know, they were gently taken away and advised what they're going to do and their rights, etc. It was when the numbers came where they couldn't keep up with those they take away with place. And they said, you know, at this rate, we can't control this. And you know, do you want us to use any kind of a force? Because everybody agreed, nobody wants that in Hawaii. We have enough videos elsewhere in the world, in the mainland, you know, force, and nobody wanted that there. So yes. your, your commander called you and said, do you want us to use the force we need no, to No, they use? called me because if I could pass word on to the governor, because this was a state operation. Uh, with uh, don't care people and sheriff and uh, yeah, police officers and the go go governor, you know, obviously the very difficult decision. He said, no, we should not use force, uh, physical force, because the, the question was of tasers, the question was of mustard gas. And, right. you know, guys, you would be finding yourself in the same difficult mm -hmm. position. And mm -hmm. the governor made, I right, said, so support that, knowing the consequence of it. No, no, you know, mm -hmm. chemical or, or weapons. So of the anything. journalist in me just needs to clarify. So you're saying that the, you called the governor and you told him, I'm being told that we, we can't end this without physical force, including these kinds and of tools. Not, and it, control it. Control it. And then, and you told him that and asked him, what should, I, what should we do? I'm asking that the people in command, you know, ask me to pass the word, you know, in regards to the use of force. And I passed the response back at this time, no. So, okay, all right. Guys, just a quick comment from each of you. How would you handle the same situation? What, what, what goes through your mind when you're hearing what, what Mary Kim went through? You know, um, what we are witnessing on Kauai, because we, we have protectors on Kauai that even though they're not there physically, um, they are also out there uh, voicing their concern and their solidarity with the protectors. And what we've seen is, is respect. We've seen the kapu aloha in practice. It's what I would call the instigators. There's a number of instigators in this, and I think that's what social media, one of the double-edged swords of social media, because the primary core of this movement is very peaceful. And I think if we were able to filter out all of the instigators, I mean, it's like two kids that have a disagreement in a schoolyard. If it's just the two of them, the likelihood of them coming to blows is very highly unlikely. But if you have a hundred kids surrounding them all saying, fight, fight, you know, that's where you see um, acts of violence. I think, like Mayor Kim said, and I'm not going to give him any advice, I'd probably follow what he's doing if I'm ever faced with um, the same situation, uh, is to give these parties room to breathe, to be able to sit down and talk things out. And, um, and that's hard to do with a social media presence because you have a number of people that would like to incite um, unruly behavior. But those folks are not really sincere. The protectors have made it clear um, that they do not subscribe to that. And so they're managing the social media movement as well as they possibly can. I, I want to interject just yes. to make it, uh, there was no real energies for violence on either side. Uh, and I do mean that. If you go up there, you know, you're really uh, quite impressed, really, in the control of a crowd. And this was strictly a decision on the numbers game. They would not be able to keep, keep that area clear. You know, I, 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 we do need to move on. I've got a, a big pile of other questions here. Um, but I, <laughs> I you know, it's, it is sort of a hot <laughs> topic. Um, and then, so the another one we've gotten about is now a question for the other three mayors about the other big project that uh, part the uh, rail. <laughs> How do the other three mayors really feel about paying for heart that will only benefit Oahu residents? I mean, is that happening? You get, that's through the, the hotel room tax, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. So the hotel, the, there's a 1% increase in hotel room tax across all the state, every county, and that 1% comes to Oahu to build rail. It's not something I requested. In fact, I wanted the excise tax half a percent surcharge extended for one more year it have made the same amount um, and it would only been paid for by the folks of Oahu but I was outnumbered in that request and I kept asking for it 
we'll take the money, we need it for rail, but it's not something that I was asking for. I'd like to add one thing. I think this rail project is not just about Oahu. There's a million people on this island. It's the capital city. It's where the military is. Everyone will use it. It benefits the entire state. But yes, I think the people of Oahu where it's being built should be the ones paying for it. And I would have supported that. But it's, it is what it is. I'm kind of assuming everyone would kind of agree. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm the smallest county, and I got to say that the county of Koi, and I oftentimes have to remind people, but we're being subsidized by the other counties just by the nature of the economy of scale. I mean, the economic generator is Waikiki in the city and county of Honolulu. And, um, you know, we have a number of programs. You know, our schools, our highways are heavily subsidized by the revenue that the city and county of Honolulu generates. And, you know, I think the, the lesson of rail is the lesson of uh, how kicking the can down the road um, is now going to be a debt that my generation and my kids and my grandchildren are going to pay, just like on Kauai. Um, a lot of people are asking us to build new highways, and we're restricted. The federal government has said that these monies are going to be appropriated towards the repair and maintenance of existing infrastructure because nationwide, our existing infrastructure has fallen into major disrepair. And so I think as we move forward, uh, we need to take into account the lessons that we can learn from rail. And, um, and I gotta tell you, when I catch a flight, there are a large amount of people on Koya that are flying to Oahu to go to doctor's appointments every single day. And when you ask them, how are they getting to these doctor appointments? You know, oftentimes they have to rent a car, they have to uh, find alternative means of transportation. And when you ask people, would you be open to using that rail? Many folks find it very convenient that there's going to be a stop at the airport. What's the attitude on, urban core. on Maui? Uh, I think the attitude on Maui is very similar to the other neighbor islands. Uh, many people resent the idea. But I always remind them that, just like what Derek mentioned er earlier, we are he heavily subsidized by Oahu. And not so much the Waikiki, because I, I can put my counterparties in Wiley as I stack up on that that section, the military. We have absolutely no military presence in Maui County. And the 14, 12 to $14 billion or whatever that comes in from the military that goes into general excise tax helps. Mm. And where is all the, all the military bases located? Here in Oahu. Small ones in uh, Puakaloa and, and Barking Sands, but very small versus what we have. Okay, but not to be specific on that particular question, but you can see what uh, Mayor Caldwell is going through. I've got a question here. If you or any of your staff are targets of the federal investigation into rail, will you or they resign? You can answer that question in a second, but I'm just curious. <laughs> when you've got that kind of a, of a, a strong, strongly opposed big project like this, how, how, do you, how do you handle something like that? How would you handle something like that? Well, you've got the TMTs, but what, what would you tell Mayor Caldwell he should do? Well, you know, I think all of us, because we're administrators, I think you know by now, uh, the hardest of our jobs is personnel management mm -hmm. and finding good personnel. And that's, that's your everyday job. Mm -hmm. To find good personnel is a, the hardest thing sometimes. And the only advice that we all know is no advice to you because you all know it. You know, project management is a key to success or failure of everything. Uh, so, Mayor, I'll, I'll give you a quick answer, chance to answer that question, so, and then and then go ahead and talk about how it's going. Well, one to answer that specific question, I think it, it's what we've seen already. If you if you're a subject of an investigation or get a target letter, it's leave with pay until something transpires, and depending what it is, it could be termination or leave without pay. Um, as far as the project goes, we have many challenges still, but the good news is we actually have three-fourths of the project either completed or under construction, 10 miles, almost POW. And we have another uh, there from Aloha Stadium to Middle Street under construction, and it's going pretty well right now. And then we have the last 4.2 miles, that's what the Triple P is about, that is a struggle. But when you think public about it- Public private partnership. Public, public private partnership. We're trying to do it a different way because we believe and we hope that with a private partner that they'll be better on controlling cost, controlling schedule, which actually drives cost because delay, every year of delay is about 200 million more in cost. 
and then shifting of risk. Instead of the risk being placed on the taxpayers, it's placed on the private partner. Our hope is that that will be completed by the end of the year and awarded and a notice to proceed in the first quarter of next year, and then they're off to building the last 4.2 miles. You ask me, do I regret having this issue before me? No. I think, yes, it's been a lot of, lot of problems, a lot of headache, um, but I think it's a project that's going to give back, you know, for 100 years from now. It, it's a legacy project worth every piece of the struggle along the way. Okay. And to see it completed is something I won't be around to, to see in terms of I won't be mayor, but I think people are going to realize how important it was and it was worthwhile. Let's start this question. This is a completely different subject. Um, we could start with uh, Mayor Cole coming from Kauai. Could each mayor talk about what major threat from climate change is for your county? You're already You've suffering already from it, it right? <laughs> I mean, we, we saw it in the floods of April 2018. Um, we're starting to see it uh, in Waimea, at Waimea River. Um, you know, we have a river and we have a levee system. Uh, we have a buildup of sediment, but now we're starting to see um, tides and wave action start to move upstream and it's causing flooding effects in, in Waimea town. And so uh, I think what we're seeing is and what people are realizing is that we need to take action sooner rather than later as far as planning. You take a look at our island's infrastructure and a lot of it is in tsunami inundation zones and when you take a look at flood maps that are forecasting the worst case scenario. Now let's, let's make that clear. What we're seeing is a worst case scenario uh, diagram uh, if we do nothing. But we are taking steps to make sure that we don't have a worst case scenario on our hands. It's just about getting that message to the rest of the world. And oftentimes Hawaii has to lead by example or else it's hard to preach for other people to help out if we're not living by our own actions. You, you know, Kauai ha has basically your one highway going around the island and, and a lot of it is right up against the water uh, or it's up on ridges that are subject to landslides. What is the cost? Are, the, are you going to end up in places where there just will be places that people can't get to like because you just can't maintain the roads if the if the climate keeps going like this? Well, we're going to do everything that we possibly can to not end up in that situation. But when you take a look at what happened to Wainiha and Hyena when they were cut off, those threats are real. And right after that, um, we had another landslide in Hanalei. And that's a good example of, of addressing climate change and mitigating that type of disaster. So there's a number of improvements that the state Department of Transportation has made to help mitigate any future disaster. But like I said, when you're fighting against the forces of nature, um, you know, people should hedge their bets on Mother Nature always taking back what's hers. You know, well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, they have, you know, Kauai. And every time she seems like Maui is kind of kind of like a sidetrack, you know, no one even thinks about Maui. But we I have one too. We all think about Maui yeah. all the time. Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. But I really do have, uh, our county has some tremendous challenges. Well, let's, let's start with the West Maui. We have one highway that goes in and out. And right now, about four and a half miles of that highway is now abutting the ocean and starting to fall into the ocean. And that's the only way in and out of the West Maui, okay? Heavily populated, heavily tourist attraction, which we need to address. And so we're working with the state to move the highway up. We've talked about that for 35 years. So why is it that it's not done already? Well, the problem is money, okay? Every time we are on the step right up there, other priorities come up and the money disappears, okay? And so I, I have assurances from the state DOT that we're gonna really focus on that. The other area is East Maui. For decades, not just, just the last 10, 15 years, for many, many decades, East Maui has been cut off with landslides time in and time out. Every year. Uh, at least five or six times a year, and sometimes even more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk, you guys get rain in hyena, and all, that's nothing compared to what they <laughs> hyena, have. Hyena, not hyena. Oh, hyena. <laughs> excuse me. Excuse me, <laughs> hyena. Sorry about that. Hyena. Excuse me, I, mean, I, mis I, I misspoke. I'm on just that playing. One. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I can handle that. But, you know, uh, Maui County has many challenges because our roadways. The other part is, we have had almost 17,000 acres of uh, brush fire. We've had more brush fires than these counties put together the last three years, are I mean, the last five that, years. Are you convinced that's climate related? It's climate related, oh, obviously. We have not had any, any rain of any magnitude in Central Plains over the last two and a half months. 
It is really bad. It is as dry as any desert you could find. And of course, Mahipono and other companies are now putting uh, or trying to uh, plow under the fields and plant crops, which will help. But that's not taking away the problem. And Maui has been known for brush fires for years. Look what we had last year in Lahaina with a brush fire. Had it not been for our excellent firefighters and emergency responders, we would have lost all of Lahaina town up to the Lahaina flood control area. Wow. That would have wiped out two thirds of the, the town. And so we understand these challenges. We don't have lava flows, thank God for that. You know, I'm thankful for that. <laughs> and, 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 and the rains we've had, you know, we had the big Wailuku River flood, and luckily there's not many people who live along the river, and those that did, we were able to mitigate any major damage. We only had a few homes damaged. But then when we went back to do repairs, we had all kinds of other challenges with the sacred rocks and all that. And I respect the Hawaiians and their beliefs, but then what do I do for safety and protection of lives and property? So there's many issues we have, similar to other counties, you know, so no, I'm not saying that we're abnormal, but you know, when we're talking about roads here in, in Maui County, especially Maui Island, we are in a dire strait right now because managed retreat is part of our whole problem. And we've got to manage the retreat now. Managing we can't wait. from the shoreline. Yeah, from the shoreline, managing it back. Mayor Caldwell, you've got a, a big issue in, on your lap with this Alawai flood control, the Waikiki flood mm -hmm. control project. And what you run into is, here's the federal government offering this oh, no, money, the state's willing to kick yeah. in money, you folks are willing to do the maintenance. But then people just don't, the upstream folks just are dead set against this right. project. And it's yep. in some jeopardy, I would seem. So I, I do want to, you know, just I think all of us are subject. It's a climate crisis. It's a climate emergency. Um, we've broken it worldwide, the records in July for heat. Mm -hmm. Highest ever since I've been recording. All of our, on, on all our counties in June and July broke records on heat. Rain, rain bombs. His island, rain bombs in Hanalei. Rain bombs on your island, on rain east bombs on yeah. east, east side of Honolulu oh, yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you have the, the sea level rise issue, you know, the roads, North Shore roads are falling in. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to retreat in areas. We're going to have to raise the level in certain areas. Um, and then we have issues like the Alawai Flood Mitigation Project. It really is about protecting Waikiki, which is a huge generator of income for the entire state in terms of visitors. If it gets wiped out by flood, you're going to see TAT drop immediately down to nothing for a while and huge impacts in the billions of dollars. So we're trying to plan a project, but you're shifting some of that risk, Malka, into neighborhoods that already have risk because I was the, the rep from Manoa when the 2004 flood came. But so it's trying to hmm. get people upstream to be comfortable with what the Army Corps is proposing at, in, and, ex, and explaining. It's important from an economics point of view, but also whatever is done, Daryl, has to be done that you're not endangering homes and lives in another area. And I think the Army Corps and we all need to do a better job in government to explain that to the residents and then work with them to make adjustments, which I th believe the Army Corps is willing to do. We're still working really hard, the state, us, and the Army Corps, along with the council now, to see if we can't at least keep the money in place. We don't want to lose $348 million. Now, This is a project that's critical, but it needs to be done in a way that people are understanding and accepting some of the shifting of risk and mitigating those risks. Um, you want to say anything about the climate change issue? Otherwise, I can move on to something No, else. I'd like to say that it's something that we all have to be very well aware of climate change impact. I mean, it's very difficult sometimes when uh, heads of government refuse to believe it exists. Mm. But I don't think any of us uh, are aware enough or smart enough, or put it that way, to realize all the consequences of climate change. For a while, people only focus on the rising sea. Uh, you just pointed on something that was quite evident. My goodness, uh, have you seen any time in our lives where records broken on heat? Mm -hmm. But I don't know the consequence of that down the line. And I think we better get our act in gear and get governments to realize this is something that we have to focus on and realize the risk of it. We know the hazard. We have to risk because our responsibility is to mitigate that as best as we can. Okay, so let me move along because uh, we're running out of time. <laughs> How are the mayors dealing with visitors putting themselves in dangerous situations to get the perfect selfie? What safeguards is the HVB, <laughs> HTA now, right? Yeah. Uh, putting in place. Uh, each one of you have horror stories of this. Yes, right? and, and my county has had an enormous number 
number of uh, lost yeah. hikers and hikers who have been found dead, guys who jump off of bridges into, into rivers where it's uh, too shallow and, and, and get killed. And, uh, there's, they go on and on. In fact, right now we have two active missing hikers right now, or two missing persons, and we believe they went hiking, but we haven't found them. And so it taxes our, our, our emergency services. It's costing a lot to get people out there looking for these people. We had that one uh, incident with the haiku lady who disappeared and 17 days later was found alive. So now that's raised expectation that we can do that for everybody. And we've unfortunately found that guy from California had fallen off the cliff and, and, and was found dead. So the spectrum goes both ways. Our residents are feeling very pressured. You know, and even when they go to their beaches, they feel like they're pressured because they can't get on their beaches because it's inundated with commercial activities and as well as tourists using our so beaches. So what do we do about this? You know, well, for me, one of the things I'm proposing uh, to my council is that we will have what I call putting, bringing back local days at our beaches. Sundays, <laughs> Cora will not be allowed to be used. No commercial activities on Sundays and holidays. Because to me, they would have still have well over 300 days of the year to use our beaches. So you're so, literally saying that tour, tour buses can't operate on those days? Well, they're looking at that in, 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 in Oahu also. I mean, we all got to take stands. I mean, we, we are getting to the point we have no choices. We have to manage our resources. Do we have to have a, in Maui, Kanapali, or some of the other beaches, be like Hanama Bay, close once a week or twice a week because they need to get renovated and uh, cleaned up and, you know, so... We have to do this. Mayor Kalkami, on, on your side, once you, you lost the highway, it gave you kind of an opportunity to yeah. go, <laughs> go roll the clock back a little bit, right? Yeah, you know, we, uh, we learned a lot from that, that, um, that disaster. It allowed us to hit that reset button. We were able to implement the Hyena State Master Plan, which limits the amount of visitors, changes the way people got to get out there. A majority of the people are going to need to take a North Shore shuttle. Um, and, and we're starting to see signs of success. But getting back to the main question about these people putting themselves in dangerous situations, you know, I put a lot of that on some of those guidebooks. Mm. On, um, I t Google Maps will take you exactly to one of the most dangerous places. And mm -hmm. how do you legislate common sense? You, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I got a gate up that has, you know, access closed. There's a number of people that have passed away in this area. You're walking past the lays and hanging I'm there. I'm not going to even name the spot just in case there's people in the LA out there. They shouldn't be out there during the winter months. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, they will go around. They will um, I'm over. not adhere to local advice to stay away. And one of the hardest phone calls I had to make soon after taking office was to a mother that had just lost her daughter on our island. And I tell you, if anybody um, ever has to go through that, uh, they would take this issue personally, and it's something that frustrates me as a surfer and as an ocean lover. These are places that tourists didn't know about, and they shouldn't have known about it. There are vahipana and places on our island that should be for our local residents only because we have local knowledge, we know when it's dangerous, and quite frankly, visitors don't belong in that area. It's, it's a clear sign of disrespect. Mayor Carlo, you were nodding in agreement with when Mayor Victor Inouye was say, talking about stopping yeah. tour. Is, is that something that's being considered well, here? Well, and you think about Kailua Beach, we stopped commercial activity on the yeah. beach. You can't go down there and rent your kayak to go out to the Mokus. You gotta rent it in the town. This is a reaction to the you know commercializing of beaches on the on the other side of the island, the windward side, and then, you know, the people of Waimanalo have objected tour buses pulling to Waimanalo Beach Park, so they are regulating that. They're not allowing them to go in. And that's part of this carrying capacity thing. On How much is too much before people say, we've had it? And you're seeing it being done here and there, and if it's not handled right, it's gonna spread to more places. That's, that's why it's nodding. I agree with them, and we, we need to be able to manage this better than we are today. How's things on the big island? You get plenty of room? <laughs> get plenty of room. Puna can put the whole island of Oahu in there. You know, on this subject, uh, I think we all better get serious of what is happening. Mm -hmm. Look at our hypocrisy. We're talking about programs and problems of too many tourists. I knew that back in the first year I ran when someone asked me, a reporter, what's your goal? I said, to make Hawaii a nice place to live and you make it a nice place to live, there'll be a nice place to do business, nice place to do boats, it'll be a nice place to visit. I felt that some of us 
you know, we're doing the opposite. Focus the energies on a nice place to visit. And let's face it, guys, we spend millions of dollars a year to attract more. you talking about restricting. You know, that's what I mean. But we, have, yeah, yeah. we have to get our uh, heads together and where we're going to go on this because on all islands, it's just a matter of degrees, this is a problem. But above all, we better remember this is where people live. Okay, uh, Mayor Kim, thanks. And we're just about out of time. You know, We've got two first-year mayors. You guys will be mayors for a while, probably. I don't think you have a lot of high ambitions after finishing your mayor term, but mayor, we're not, what are you, you going to do? Are you going to well, run I wish, for I wish you could have a, a third term. And I actually tried when I ran. There was a charter amendment that didn't pass. I mean, I, I think being mayor is the best job you can have, really, in the world, because yes. you can do stuff. But what's the second I'm best not job? Ready to, I'm not ready to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping my options open. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, Keep I'm my options open. Things. Okay, yep. we we got to wrap it up, guys. Thank Gentlemen, you. thank you very <laughs> much. Oh, thank it's you, been a pleasure. And thank you all of you at home for joining us tonight. And we thank our guests, Harry Kim, Mayor of Hawaii County, Derek Kalkami, Mayor of Kauai County, Michael Victorino, Mayor of Maui County, oh. and Kurt Caldwell, Mayor of the City and County of Honolulu. Thank you, Daryl. Next week on Insights, the concerns over vaping using electronic cigarettes. How much government regulation should there be? The Bears will be back. No, just kidding. <laughs> Join the discussion next Thursday night. I'm Daryl Huff for Insights on PBS Hawaii. Ahui ho.